Alright, we're going to finish off section 7.4 today on solving quadratic equations. And what we're going to learn is something called the quadratic formula. And basically what the quadratic formula is, is a special little formula, it's actually not that little, that can be used to solve any quadratic equation. Any of them. Wow, this is a pretty powerful thing. Now, the quadratic equation has to be in this form. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. But if you can get it in that form, which usually isn't a problem, uh, so that it's equal to zero and you have an x squared term, an x term, and then a constant, then you can always use the quadratic formula. And it doesn't even matter if the b value is zero or the c value is zero. The a value can't be zero. Do you know why? Because if the a value is zero, then you have zero x squared. You have no x squared. In other words, it's not even a quadratic anymore. So it didn't make sense to use the quadratic formula. But besides that, a, B, and C can be any number you want, it can be a fraction, it can be decimal, they can be negative, and you can always use the quadratic formula. Wow, what a powerful formula indeed. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you what the quadratic formula is. In Precalculus 11, I go through this long-winded explanation for how to get the quadratic formula, but I can't do that for you because we haven't learned a process called completing the square. So all I'm going to be able to do is actually tell you the quadratic formula. And I'm going to do that right now, but guess what? we're going to switch to the Precalculus 11 video again. I know, I know, if nothing else in this chapter, you've learned what a lazy guy your math teacher is. So here we go. I'm going to talk a little bit more at the end, so you'll get some real Foundations 11 content in a minute. But for now, here's the Precalculus 11 slash Foundations 11 stuff. The solutions of the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero are given by, in other words, if you want to know what value of x or values of x you could put in here in these two spots to make this left side equal zero, you can always get the answer by using x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And there's a little video that I will watch with you in class. It's a terrible video. I'm putting the link right here. You can go watch it now if you want. Uh, but we're going to watch it in class twice. And even though it's a horrible video, low quality, kind of annoying, when you watch it twice, I promise you'll memorize the quadratic formula for the rest of your life. I don't know why, but it works. And the tune to this song goes x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and that's going to be stuck in your head and you always remember it so it's great okay so let's solve a couple quadratic equations using the quadratic formula here's a quadratic equation and it's already equal to zero that's great because it has to be equal to zero in order to use the quadratic formula now all you need to do is be able to realize what a is equal to b is equal to and c is equal to that's no problem is it a is in front of x squared well what's in front of x squared one b is in front of x, that's a 4. c is the constant, that's negative 1. Now we're just going to plug those numbers in here. So we get x equals negative b, which is negative 4, plus or minus square root b squared, so that's 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. And you just you know, do your multiplying, your adding, all that kind of stuff, and you get your answer. Negative 4 plus or minus square root, 4 squared is 16, minus, okay, be careful here, 4 times 1 is 4, times negative 1 is negative 4. This is going to happen a lot where you get negative, I uh, take away a negative, all divided by 2. x equals negative 4 plus or minus square root 16, take away negative 4 is 20, because that becomes a plus all over 2. It's a good answer, but I'd like you to do better than that. Why? Because we can simplify the 20, right? Root 20 can be simplified. Let's do our tree. Uh, 20 is 4 and 5, and 4 is 2 and 2. We need a pair, and we have a pair right there. So 20, root 20, I guess, is the same as 2, that comes out, and the 5 stays in. So we have x equals negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 5, instead of 20, put 2 root 5, all over 2. Guess what? There's one more thing we can do. You might remember this from before. Since we can divide the first term by 2 and the second term by 2, we can do that. 
if you could only divide one of them by two, it wouldn't work. If this was seven here instead of two, you couldn't do it because you couldn't divide seven by two. But we can divide both of these by two. So we do that. And what we end up with is x equals negative four divided by two is negative two plus or minus. Two divided by two is one, but you don't even need to put it, root five. There's our answer. x equals negative two plus or minus root five. Uh, how many answers is this? How many solutions? Or how many um, roots is this? two roots here, negative two plus root five and negative two minus root five. All right, let's do another one. This one as well is already in the correct form, so we just have to pick out our a, our b, and our c. a equals three, b is negative four, c is five. And happily we go plugging in numbers. x equals negative b, so that's negative negative four, which makes positive four, plus or minus square root b squared, so it's negative four all squared, be careful about that, b squared minus four a, which is three, c, which is five, divided by, but what I say is all divided by, because otherwise people sometimes forget, and they only put the, um, the, the divided sign like that, and if you do that, believe it or not, it's wrong. It has to go all the way over to there. So I actually say x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by two a. I know the all is not very musical, but I gotta throw it in there. Okay, on the bottom is two a, so two times three. X equals four plus or minus square root negative four squared is sixteen minus four times three is twelve times five is sixty divided by six. X equals four plus or minus the square root of negative 44, all divided by six. Let's stop and think for a second here. What seems strange here? What seems strange here is this, square root of a negative number. You can't do it. There is no solution to this question. There is no value of X that you can plug in right here and here to get the left-hand side equal to zero. Okay, now the only thing different for these last, how many I got here, last two, is they're not in the form we want. We want them to be in general form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So what do you think you're gonna have to do? Well, you're gonna have to move everything to one side and you're gonna have to expand this side. Let's just leave the two x here for now and let's multiply. Now, when you multiply three things like this, what I often find people do is they multiply three times x and three times negative one and they also multiply three times this and three times, no, that's not right. If I was multiplying three numbers together, if I was multiplying two times three times four, I don't go two times three and two times four. I go two times three and get an answer and multiply that answer by four. Or since order doesn't matter, I could do three times four and then multiply by two. Or since order doesn't matter, I could do two times four and then multiply by three. It doesn't matter the order you do them in, but don't multiply three times this and three times that. So why don't we multiply Hmm, let's multiply these two together. So what we have is three, and then we have x times x, right? We have to do mountains and valleys here. So x times x is x squared. x times positive one is x, and negative one times x is negative x. Positive x, negative x, they cancel. And then negative one times positive one is negative one. Okay, now we can do mountains here. So we end up with 2x equals 3 times x squared is 3x squared, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Great, we're almost in this form now. We want it equal to 0. Uh, you're probably going to move the 2x over because I've drilled into your head to always keep this uh, coefficient, the leading coefficient, positive. With the uh, quadratic formula, it really doesn't matter, but I still like to follow that rule. So I'm going to le leave that there. 3x squared, make sure you put it in the right order, right? First the x squareds, then the x's, so you should have minus 2x, and then minus 3. And we're on our way. a equals 3, b equals negative 2. You don't have to write these down like on a test or something. Just doing it so you're clear how I'm getting my answer. x equals negative b, so negative negative 2 is positive 2, plus or minus square root b squared, so it's negative 2 squared minus 4a, that's 3c, negative 3, all divided by 2a. Uh, so x equals 2 plus or minus square root, negative 2 squared is 4 minus, 4 times 3 is 12, times negative 3 is negative 36, all over 6. x equals 2 plus or minus square root, 
4, take away negative 36 is 40 all over 6. Looks good, not quite finished. How come? Because we want to simplify this 40. That's square root of 40. So 40 is 8 and 5. 8 is 4 and 2. 4 is 2 and 2. We need a pair. There's a pair. So that comes out, and what's left inside is the 2 and the 5. 2 times 5 is 10. So x equals 2 plus or minus 2 root 10 all over 6. Are we finished? Actually, we can do one more step, can't we? This 2 and this 2 and this 6 can all be divided by 2. So what you end up with is x equals, uh, this will become a 1, and yes, you do have to put that 1. You can't just make it disappear, otherwise it'd be a 0. But if you divide 2 by 2, you get 1, plus or minus 1 root 10 all over 3. I divided this by 2 and got 1. I divided this by 2 and got 1. I divided this by 2 and got 3. So 1 plus, root, plus or minus root 10 all over 3 are our two solutions. Okay, I'm back live for you Foundations 11 people only. Uh, and I want to do this one last question. Now, you'll notice that, you know, the page I have in front of me here is different than the page you have in front. You have a whole bunch of notes down here or whatever. Anyway, find this on your page. We're going to do this one last question together. So, basically, uh, we're going to use the quadratic formula again. x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. There it is. Uh, but this is not in the correct form, right? We want it to be in that ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Why isn't it in that form? Because it's not equal to 0. We don't want this 1 half here. We want to move it over. So 2 thirds x squared minus x minus, when we bring the 1 half over, minus 1 half equals 0. And we could use the quadratic formula right now. Uh, you could put uh, negative, what, what's the a value? 1. So you could put negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 2 thirds times negative 1 half. Ooh, all divided by 2 times 2 thirds. Wow, it's a lot of fractions. It will work though. I just want to be clear, you could do that. But let's say you're the sort of person who doesn't like fractions. And I know there's a lot of you out there that don't like fractions. There is a way you can get rid of the fractions here, and then you can just be dealing with uh, integers. So here's what you do. You look at the all the denominators of your a, b, and c value. So your denominator here is 3, your denominator here is 2, and the denominator here, I guess, is a 1, right? You find the lowest common denominator. So maybe I'll just write this down. You write down the lowest common denominator, which is what? Lowest common denominator of 3 and 2? 6. And what you do with that is you multiply every term by 6. So I'm going to show that. I'm going to multiply this term by 6. I'm going to multiply this term by 6. I'm going to multiply this term by 6. And I'm even going to multiply this by 6. All four terms I multiply by 6. Now, why do I do that? Because look what happens. In this first term here, if I multiply, I go 6 times 2 is 12 divided by 3 and I get 4. Or the other way you can do it, and I actually encourage you to do it this way, do the division first. So you actually go, you can cancel out the 6 and 3, divide those if you want, or ninja slice if you're one of my grade 8s. 6 and 3 cancels, so you divide them both by 3, you get a 1 on the bottom, a 2 on the top. And then 2 times 2 is just 4. So I end up with 4x squared here. 4x squared. All right. In the second one, well, the second one, I have nothing to cancel. I just get 6x, so minus 6x. In the third one, sorry about this color palette. For some reason, I'm not able to pick my colors up here. It's all messed up. So uh, back to the color palette to get my green. Um, if I do the canceling here, I cancel out in this, this third term. The 6 and the 2, I can divide them both by 2, so this becomes a 1 on the bottom and a 3 in the top. 1 on the bottom I can ignore, just 3 times 1 means minus 3 on the top there. Minus 3, and in this one here I have 6 times 0. Well, that's still 0. Hey, look what I have here. I have some numbers that are much easier to use than all those fractions. Again, it will work if you use the fractions, but I know most of you don't like fractions, so let's go with this. What's my a value? a value is 4. b value? Negative 6. And the c value? negative 3. So let's plug it into the equation. x equals negative b. b was negative 6, so negative negative 6 is positive 6. Plus or minus square root b squared. Let's save some time here. Negative 6 all squared equals 36. Minus 
4 times a, which is another 4, times c, which is negative 3. All divided by 2 times a, well 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, x equals 6 plus or minus uh, 36. Take away 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times negative 3 is negative 48. All over 8. So x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 36. Take away negative is the same as plus. 36 plus 48 is 84. All over 8. Okay, a couple things here. First thing, can I cancel out the 6 and the 8? No. This 8 is a denominator for both these terms. So you can only cancel the 8 if you can cancel it with both of them. And you can't right now because this isn't a radical sign. So are we done? No. We need to simplify the radical if we can, and we can indeed simplify the radical. So let's make a tree for 84. Well, I know 4, I'm sorry, I know 2 goes into 84. 4 does as well, actually. But I know 2 goes into 84 because this is even. So I'll go 2 and half of 84 is 42. And I know 2 goes into this as well. So I get 2 and 21. And 21 is 3 and 7. These are all prime, 3, 7, 2, and 2. But if I'm looking for um, a pair, the only pair I have are the 2s right here. So the 2 comes out. So I get a 2 out front. And what's left inside is a 3 and a 7. I multiply those, I get 2 root 21. OK, good. So x equals 6 plus, plus, plus or minus 2 root 21 all over 8. Finished? No. Now we actually can simplify them. We can divide the 6, the 2, and the 8 all by 2. So I get a 3 here, I get a 1 there, and I get a 4 there. And my final answer, at long last, x equals 3 plus or minus 1, I don't need to put that, root 21, all over 4. And there we go. Okay, so to get rid of uh, fractions, find the lowest common denominator and multiply every single term by the lowest common denominator. Um, a very useful skill indeed. Okay, uh, have a great day and talk to you next time. Move on up toward your destination.